Welcome, Sheboygan. Um, thank you for joining us for our per first ever program. And this is the Sustainable Sheboygan Spotlight. It grew out of the Sustainable Sheboygan Task Force, and we were asked by the Education and Outreach, Outreach, Outreach Committee of that task force to talk about sustainable topics in Sheboygan. And our first topic, um, we're going to feature recycling. And to help us discuss this is Scott Hansen. He's a president of Cardinal Environmental, and he can tell us a little bit more about himself. Uh, yeah, my name is Scott Hansen. Uh, I'm the president of Cardinal Environmental. We're a water and wastewater laboratory, and we do various types of environmental sampling and analysis. Uh, I'm a member of the Natural Resources Committee of the Sheboygan, Sustainable Sheboygan Task Force. Uh, the task force started in 2008, and I've been on that committee since then. Great, thank you. And my name is Heather Cleveland. I'm the Food Justice Director for a nonprofit called Nourish, where we connect um, farmers, and local food with low-income families. And then I have a background. I have an environmental engineering degree where I did environmental engineering work. And then I went back to school for urban planning. I've been on the Sustainable Sheboygan Task Force um, prior to going to school. I was on the Natural Resources Committee with Scott, and I'm back and was asked to help moderate and host this program. So Scott, could you tell us a little bit, a little bit more of the history of the Sustainable Sheboygan Task Force, when it started, how it started? Yeah, in, originally it started uh, in, 19, in 2008, and it was a task force developed by or created by the mayor at that time. Uh, they wanted us to study and make recommendations regarding strategies to be adopted by the city for creating and maintaining a sustainable Sheboygan. And we were going to focus on recycling, uh, green purchasing, energy conservation, waste management, and sustainable measures. Uh, that uh, has been done We've been working on those types of topics for, for this entire period of time. Uh, the mayor has appointed 18 people. They represent, represent a diverse cross-section of our community. And they all sit on the uh, sustain, Sustainable Sheboygan Task Force. It changes every couple of years. You're asked to stay on the committee or to bring on some, someone else. Uh, the four guidelines utilized by the task force members are based on the natural step by Sarah James in to Bjorn Lati, uh, those four guidelines are reduce dependence on fossil fuels, reduce dependence on chemicals and other manufactured substances that can accumulate in nature, reduce dependence on activities that harm life-sustaining ecosystems, and meet the hierarchy of present and future human needs fairly and efficiently. Great. So when was the, when was the task force founded? How many years ago was that? Uh, okay, it's been, it's been just about six years. It was in the summer of 2008, I believe. Okay, great. And there's been a lot of changes, good, bad, progress. Can you tell us a little bit about um, what's happened as of late? With uh, Yes, recently we're working on a uh, system called the Green Tier Sustainable Communities process. And this has been an effort for quite some time to uh, develop a, a process and a, a direction, a guidebook for the city as a whole uh, regarding sustainability. We started this process specifically regarding green tier just in the last three to four months and have finally had a revelation and some wonderful help from some of the staff members uh, to really push this whole process forward. Our effort will be to, is to be a member of the green tier uh, city, we're putting together green tier cities, and we're putting together a uh, our guidelines for that as we speak, uh, and they will hope to be finalized within the next within the next month or so. Okay, great. So let's move on then to our topic at hand. Here is recycling. So I know Scott that you you started to research this a while back. So I was wondering why and when did you begin researching and investigating recycling in Sheboygan? Probably three years ago, that was one of the topics that came up in one of our uh, every other month meetings. And during the, during the discussion, a lot of questions came up about the myths of recycling. Uh, those myths being that, well, people, they don't really recycle that stuff. It all just goes to the landfill. I see the truck come, they put it in the back of the truck, and it drives off. They're not separating the stuff. They're, they're throwing the blue bags in the same container as the other, as the other materials, as my garbage. Well. We, we knew that that wasn't necessarily the case. Uh, 
But we needed to follow that from beginning to end and track that process. So we did follow a garbage truck and a recycling truck one day. And for the most part, people should know they're one and the same. The newer trucks that we have are have two separate compartments. One side is for the garbage, the other side is for recycling. So when the, when the, and that's for efficiency. When the trucks pull up and, and uh, the sanitation worker gets out and, and collects and throws the bags in, he's separating them on the two sides. Those trucks then, they both have compactors, and then the trucks return eventually, when they're full, to the local uh, facility, which is a materials recycling facility of sorts, uh, it is at Advanced Disposal on Payne Avenue. And they dump those two compartments into two different sections of the, the uh, recycling facility location. They call this a transfer station. One side is for the garbage, and that material is later transferred and then sent to one of the local landfills. The other side is for the recycled material that will continue on to a formal MRF, which is a materials recycling or materials reclamation facility. Uh, so the trucks go, they deliver this waste uh, and recyclables to two separate areas, and then at that point, at a later date, a truck comes up and takes the commingled single stream waste, cycle, waste recyclable material and transports it to Germantown to a uh, facility owned by Waste Management that is a formal material, recycl or material reclamation mm -hmm. facility. And uh, at that location, it goes on an instrument, uh, a large device that uh, with the number of conveyor belts and various processes to separate the various types of uh, recyclables that are sent there. Uh, the, that uh, conveyor belt is made up in some areas there is a uh, an area to extract the ferrous material by magnetic processes. There's a number where they use an eddy stream, an eddy current to remove the aluminum materials and there is another number of other uh, sorting type devices that separate the paper and the plastics. Eventually, uh, there's manpower used to, as quality control and to separate some of the other items that need to be uh, taken out of the recycling stream. Those materials are then co- or, or batched and uh, baled uh, based on their recycling types and at some time at a later date are hopefully put back into uh, a, a, a reuse of some sort. Uh, so what we did conclude after re reviewing some of these myths is that no, the waste streams are indeed being recycled and the other material does indeed go to the garbage. Uh, and uh, that process has been going on for, for several years now. We recently changed to a different MRF facility and this facility is able to take a few additional items that uh, had not been able to be recycled in the past. Excellent. And I remember when you were initially investigating in this, you actually you went to these facilities to see how it worked and that it was what was said was being done was actually being done. So you didn't just take someone's word for it. You actually saw yeah. this is how it works. And that's correct. I did, I did follow them to the facilities. And, yeah. and I followed them as far as Sheboygan to right. the recycling facility or the transfer station facility here in Sheboygan and, and confirmed it that case. And that just for my own personal edification, it was the first time I saw the two separate storage areas. Now, when it went from there to the MRF facility, I know more about the MRFs now because I received a very nice, uh, nice handout, a, a uh, single stream recycling guide from Advanced Disposal that shows a video or a PowerPoint uh, definition of how the MRF works. I have not personally seen the seen MRF that, that where the waste is going to right now. And I understand there was another, I guess, a bit of confusion in the way the city of Sheboygan picks up their recycling and their waste is with one truck. So with that, other communities, I should back up a little bit, other communities maybe have two trucks or two contractors. We have one. So what happens if the recycling side gets full? Because well, well, this is something some people might yeah, see no, happen. That, that's, that's a good point. And, and what, what, what happens is that they, the drivers dis, contact dispatch and explain at which point they're full. If they can continue on further and fill up the other section of the truck before they go back to the facility, they may choose to do so. It depends how close they are. Obviously, the efficiency is that you'd have the truck completely full before you'd transfer back to the transfer station on the south side of town. Uh, but what happens, it does not eventually get thrown into the other bin just to keep going. They do it as efficiently as possible, and the trucks were specifically designed based on the typical capacity 
with a typical percentage of garbage versus recyclable materials. So there's some thought put into it. Right. And they also have compactors, so they can compact for, to quite, quite a degree before they have to return to dump the loads. Right. And I guess the benefit of that is that there's only one truck doing one route rather than two trucks doing two you that know, is, so there's that pros is, and cons to any right. system that you would use. That, that is correct. And, and Sheboygan moved toward in that direction for that type of truck some years ago. And uh, it's, it's an efficient process. And it's one of those that you don't easily change. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, there's a, there's a, it, it may take the two to four years to change to a different type of trucking or a different type of container. Significant investment. The, the fact that we can do single stream recycling is extremely important. If, it, if we had to continue to separate paper and blue bag and, and separate the individual components even that go into the blue bag, it would be much more time consuming and costly. But the single stream recycling makes it relatively efficient. Okay, so I know you did the invest initial investigations, but then for this interview, you, you interviewed some more people. So who did you chat with from the city of Sheboygan to get more information about our recycling program? Yeah, I was uh, very fortunate. I was able to talk to uh, Dave Beeble. Uh, the, uh, the Department of Public Works Director, and he directed me to Joel Colstein, who is the uh, City of Sheboygan Superintendent of Streets and Sanitation. And I posed a number of questions to Joel, and these were questions that were developed in our committee, our Sustainable Task Force Committee, where the questions came from all 18 individuals. And uh, we submitted those to Joel, and he did a wonderful job of responding to each and every one of those questions and tried to explain uh, the decision-making on the part of the city moving through all the recycling activities and explained where things go. Uh, the second person I talked to was a gentleman named Mike Toon, who is at Advanced Disposal. And Mike is, re is responsible for the recycling at the Advanced Disposal facility at this time. And he was the one who was able to explain to me how materials are handling once they get to that part of the transfer station here in Sheboygan. And then he told me more about the Germantown facility. And he was the one who provided the PowerPoint presentation. Uh, both gentlemen were very helpful in trying to answer any questions I had. Great. And I know when the task force put together the questions, they were trying to think about the community and what questions they've heard people have. So I thought it was a great mix of questions. So I guess I'll start with a really broad one. Why should our community recycle? Well, you know, I think it's, it's, it's probably pretty clear when anyone thinks about it. Mm -hmm. We should reduce, reuse, and recycle. Um, less is better when possible. Repurpose when we can. We have a number of wonderful opportunities to do so in the community, whether it's electronics recycling programs or, or Habitat Restore or our Goodwills, our Salvation Army, St. Vincent's, whatever. I don't mean to not bring any of them up. They're all good. When we have... When we go through the effort and the cost to, uh, to generate a product, if it, uh, if it can be reused once again or passed on to someone else, that certainly makes more sense than wasting energy and effort to build something brand new once again. So it, that part makes sense. The other thing is there are some state mandates for mm -hmm. recycling, and uh, the city complies with those, and it, it exceeds their requirements. Um, anything that we can bypass from the landfill is potentially a cost savings, if for no other reason, a, cost, a savings from the aspect that we're not going to be filling up that landfill sooner than, later, than we need to. Right. The, the budget for recycling and garbage for the city is $1.2 million. That's close to 2% of the city's budget. So it's a pretty substantial effort. And to keep that cost as low as possible, the recycling component needs to stay high. Now, people may think that, well, if you recycle, we should always generate revenue from recycling. Unfortunately, that's not the case. Recycling, recycling is taking waste materials and putting, it, putting the commodities back into a reusable purpose. But it's all on a supp supply and demand basis. So when these transfer facilities and these MRFs receive material, they need to receive it from a number of different places to generate an adequate volume of recyclable material to justify someone wanting to take that commodity and make good use of it. And that's why a MRF is usually a regional facility that takes waste from a number of different communities so that they can generate a larger volume. They will warehouse that material, and hopefully, if they're lucky, they will be able to sell it to someone to use at an appropriate time. But uh, commodity, uh, that type of commodity is very much a, uh, very much a supply and demand 
type of product. So it's difficult to say that you're not always going to generate revenue by recycling something, but you are going to avoid the landfill cost. Right. So in the city of Sheboygan, we mentioned earlier that we have um, one truck that collects, and I know other communities have carts, like the city of Milwaukee has carts. We have the blue bag. So why did we go with the blue bag system? You know, that, there's, that, that was, certainly that was one of the very important questions that we had. And uh, the, Joel Colsty gave me a, a very good explanation of that, if I can find it. But certainly one of the points was that the city had already started with the dual cycle trucks. Uh, and the, those trucks have, have the two compartments. If you take containers, if you take plastic containers, you actually drive two trucks. One truck to pick up the garbage container, the second truck to pick up the uh, container for the recyclable materials. Uh, a number of issues in the city make it a little bit more difficult. We have a number of multifamily homes. We have a number of homes whose street access is actually their alley. Uh, we have a number of uh, streets that have city side street parking. All of this makes it much more difficult to have a mechanical truck come along and pick up a container and dump it into the load. So it would take a while to both educate the community and to be able to make it a workable system. Uh, the, I will re redo, it's, it says it's more efficient to throw bags in the back of a truck as opposed to tipping containers into a truck. Uh, the city recently, as, as little as a year ago, completed a garbage study related to the collection of garbage and recycling program. Through that study, it was determined at the time that the most cost-effective process of the city was to remain with the process of hand collection of bagged garbage and recycling. While there are many benefits to utilizing the cart system, there are also some drawbacks. Uh, as I mentioned, those drawbacks, uh, it, the, the current system is pretty effective and efficient and provides the lowest operating cost for the residents. The condition of a long-term existing equipment did not allow them to, to roll out a new process within a, any short term. It would take two to four years. A city provided staff to manage a large the city would need a lot of staff to manage all these carts. There would be several carts like this that would be needed throughout the city. Uh, additional costs to residents for the carts themselves. The city of Sheboygan has a dense population with, of two to three family homes, alley collection, and on-street parking. Uh, carts limit the amount of material a resident can dispose of above and beyond the recycling regulations. And the operating cost of automated collection trucks is quite expensive. Um, so. You know, there were a few other things that came up to me. Many of the cities that do utilize the cart system still require customers or require their residents to bag garbage and recycle items before placing them in the cart. Now, we're trying to keep bags out of the landfills and even more so out of the recycling waste stream. But if you think of it, if you put, if you put your garbage directly into the carts, the carts become stained and messy. Mm -hmm if you're not diligent to keeping them clean, that can pose an issue as well. Um, so there were a number of reasons that at this point, the single stream blue bag recycling process is the way the city would like to proceed. Right, and I'm, you can buy the blue bags at any grocery store, I'm almost certain. Correct. And I know you mentioned single stream earlier. Could you explain that a little bit more? Yeah, single stream means that uh, all the recyclables, the newspapers, the aluminum, the, the uh, cardboard, uh, plastics, everything goes into one single bin, in this case, at the, at the, in the garbage trucks. Now, they, they, go in, they, they go into your blue bag, or if you choose to take your paper and put it into a corrugated box or, or a grocery bag that is intact and will stay intact, that is acceptable as well. But single stream means that all of the recycling materials go to one place. In this case, they go into the recycling bin of, this, of the garbage truck and then to the transfer station, and then they're separated after the fact. That's much easier than having to sort each individual sorting their individual components. One bag for glass, components. one bag for aluminum, and that sort of thing, Correct. kind of how we started. So it makes it more convenient. I, they, I, from my understanding, is they try to make it as easy as possible. Right. They, it's they, their goal. The, the sanitation workers would like it to make it easy for the, for the residents, and hopefully the residents are courteous as well 
to the sanitation workers. You know, leaving a, a mess of things that are you're requiring them to make the decision as to which is go, to go where. That's that's not appropriate. Leaving them a mess, to, uh, bags that are too heavy is not good. Uh, bags that you know we all have problems with crows or seagulls that mess up our bags. You know. Uh, if, if you can do something about that, double bagging or whatever, or keeping the foodstuffs out of there and maybe composting them instead, that might be very helpful. Uh, but uh, uh, the city wants to, the city employees want to work with the residents as well as possible, and they don't reject materials just to be annoying. They reject materials because if the wrong materials get into the recycling portion of the transfer station, uh, it takes a risk that the entire load that goes to the MRF will be rejected because it was a tainted load. Right. And that leads me to the next question is what can't go in the blue bags? I know there's some right. well, key items. Well, you know, cor corrugated cardboard is good things, but not when it's uh, got greasy pizza all over it. Uh, anything, if you think of the food stuff, the, the paper, uh, paper products can be recycled as long as they're not contaminated themselves. So if you contaminate it with food waste, Restroom waste is not acceptable. Uh, medical waste is not acceptable. Electronics are not acceptable. Batteries or printer cartridges should not be recycled in this process. There's other ways to do that. You can take both of them back possibly to the manufacturer or to a battery recycling facility. Uh, light bulbs, ceramics, heat resistant glass, styrofoam and polystyrene are not recyclable at this point. Although there is a way that you can, you can recycle styrofoam now through polyfoam products over in, uh, in Plymouth. Plymouth. Yep. Uh, the one thing that has to be done there, that you have to think of the efficiency aspect of that. At this point, we don't have a location to composite and compile that type of material. And that is probably something that this sustainable task force will be presenting to uh, the city or someplace else, that they have an area, a bin of sorts, that, where they can bring those types of materials. If you had a large enough material, a batch of that material, you can justify taking it over to Plymouth and then having it recycled. Yeah, and I know um, Goodside Grocery, the, our local food co-op, offered that around the holidays. They had a bin to collect it, so it's nice to see some of the businesses or local community people are, you know, taking the initiative to pull that together. Agreed. And so you, you mentioned um, what can't be, so what are some other programs that not only just the city but the county, the Sherwin County, offer? Well, we do, we do have the clean sweep programs. There was just one this past weekend, I believe. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, there was one a month prior to that. And that's to allow residents to clean up their garages and basements. Hazardous materials. And then get rid of the hazardous materials and, or, and to deal with the other materials that may not be hazardous, but to give them the impetus to understand it's a good time to do their cleanup and latex paints can be dried out if done so properly and various things. But it's, it's the best thing that you're getting rid of the hazardous materials that otherwise would very likely end up uh, getting overused by over applying on somebody's, uh, somebody's garden or something like that or get sent to the landfill. And uh, neither of those are good options. Um, so the, the clean sweep program is very good. Uh, the, there's also the electronic recycling programs that are going on throughout uh, there are these pharmaceutical waste uh, recycling program that the police department just had. Uh, all of those uh, are available on, you can tell when and where, or you can see when they're, uh, when the one, next ones are listed and they're on the, on the city website and we'll post those later in the day here on the program. Right. So I guess the next question is who should people contact if they have more questions about recycling in the city of Sheboygan? Well, the City of Sheboygan Department of Public Works employs several members of its staff that are trained in proper disposal methods related to the city ordinance. A contact can be made by calling 459-3440 or you can call Bruce Matzdorf, who is the sanitation lead man, and his number is 459-0224. So that wraps up our discussion about recycling for today. We'll have... We, there's probably a lot more to talk about with respect to, I guess I'll just ask you a couple of the questions, just the simple ones that we discussed that people had or you had. So when people are recycling a plastic bottle, what should they do with the bottle caps? The bottle caps can be recycled as well. And it's probably preferable that you separate them from the bottles. And part of the reason is that the bop, the, 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 it can be done both ways, but eventually it may be that there are two types of, types of plastics. So eventually they'd have to be separated. So if you just leave them separate in your recycling bag, that would be appropriate. Uh, if they are together, the other thing that happens when they go into the compactor, 
uh, they, they make an explosion, and that can be disheartening on the part of the sanitation worker. So it's, it's preferable to leave the lids off. Uh, it, literally anything that you have, any of those plastics, anything that has a recycling label on it can be recycled. Uh, the, the good news with the change to this MRF in Germantown versus one that we were going to in Chicago previously is that uh, this facility can handle more and more of the recyclables. So when I talked to Mike Toon from the Advanced Disposal, the, re the restrictions were less than they had been in the past. So if you wider see... Wider range. Oh, yeah, yeah they, they have a wider range of, of, of materials that they can accept, and, and, and they have a, a, an endpoint user for those, a wider range of materials. So do you think that as consumers, if we look at labels more and increase the demand by purchasing items that have more recyclables, that, that will make a shift in it also? Well, that's a wonderful idea. You know, <laughs> certainly I think, you know, it's, it's evident you see many more people using uh, reusable grocery bags and things like that. Any of those types of things make sense over the long haul. And uh, being conscious of that is, is, certainly, is certainly helpful. If we think about how much garbage we generate just from our daily, uh, our daily use, maybe going to a fast food place or whatever else, uh, there's, there's, there's other ways around that. Right. Uh, so being conscious of that and recycling whenever possible makes sense. Now, one of the questions that come up to the, to the committee as well is why don't we have more recycling uh, bins in the parks oh, or right. the rec department and, and, and things like that. And the, and the city's trying to do so. Uh, they, the city building, the city park buildings that are available front, they have recyclable and garbage containers at those locations. The problem that, that does come about is that people will misuse or abuse them. Right, garbage and, in both. Right, they, they put the garbage in both containers. And, and then it becomes, then it's a duplication of effort on the part of the city workers to clean all that stuff up again later. Now, maybe that's worthwhile assuming that if the people aren't, if they're going to leave it on the ground if they don't have a container to put it in. But uh, that is, that's one of the reasons there's been reluctance to try to put multiple containers at these types of locations, because, because that it, it's not policed well enough to make sure that you don't spoil the good load of recyclables. Right. And then another question that came up or comment is what to do with the plastic grocery bags that we get. So, you know, yeah, what are their feelings point. on that? You know, I would myself, I use the plastic grocery bags in my garbage or recycling containers in the home to be able to get, rather than buying plastic bags all the time. And they go into the landfill, the plastic bags go into the landfill the way we currently do things. We bag our waste rather than putting them into carts. Uh, when it, the problem with it going, and, and the problem with it going to landfills though, the, the reuse, using fewer and fewer plastic bags is a good idea. Going to paper bag is much more appropriate. It's either, it's either recyclable or it dis, it disintegrates more quickly. Mm -hmm. Plastic lasts a long time, so it lasts a long time in the landfill. So that's not a good thing. And in the case of the recycling, you send the, those plastic, the plastic materials to the recycling container or to the recycling facilities and they get caught in the conveyor belts of these systems. So you have these relatively uh, sophisticated, complicated recycling conveyor belts that separate the waste streams and they get jammed up all the time with plastic bags that get hung up in the equipment. So that's why they, they like to limit the amount of plastic bags that go there. And the small garbage plastic bags with the handles are probably even worse than the one single large, single stream right, plastic bag. Right, they're small and thin. Right. And I think we've run out of time. So I okay. just want to say thank you very much for being thank our first you. guest on this program, talking about recycling, a very important topic. And I just want to say to Sheboygan, stay tuned for our next programs. We hope to talk about bikes and to talk about local food and other great topics um, and, all the, and highlight all the great things that are happening in Sheboygan. So thank you and until next time.